let's talk about consumer driven trends. So I think introductions are pretty much taken care of, decision lab, and uh, then we have Ms. Juan from Vero, but perhaps Ms. Juan, at least you can share a little bit about what Vero is. We heard from Decision Lab just now, so if you can do an introduction. Uh, okay, hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hua Yang, the head of client solution at Vero. Uh, so at Vero, we are a leading communication consultancy in Southeast Asia. So what we do is we're helping our clients to understand uh, the market inside, the audience inside, and from there, uh, helping them with the communication strategy to communicate with the customer uh, effectively. So let's let's jump right in. I mean, there were so many interesting notes and data from the last couple of presentations. Maybe after this, I can get some input from some of the audience on how you feel about hotel F&B because that's something we probably don't touch on too much, right? It's a difficult one. Uh, getting people through the door into a hotel to use restaurants, completely different story. Um, but let's focus on, on customer-driven trends. So let's start with the first question. Could you share some of the most significant consumer trends or kind of recap a little bit um, that have been identified for 2024 and how does that differ from previous years? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tan Gao. So thank you very much for the question. Um, I think as... Um, Mr. Thuê, my, uh, my CEO, has mentioned before. So we did a study with uh, almost 2,000 uh, respondents in a uh, couple of months regarding the, you know, the trends and their habit, their new behaviors with the new trend, uh, with the new current time right now. And there's two trends that, uh, from my point of view, I think is very significant. Uh, the first of all is we know that people save more and more, right? This started in, um, you know, uh, when COVID happened. Right, the customer right now they are less uh, spontaneous when it's come to the decision of spending, especially uh, at home eating and, and, and drinking. Right, and they uh, try to think ahead. Right, and they they are more cautious when they spend their money, and they want to invest in the future. Invest in the future here meaning that how say education, right, housing or emergent funds. So this is very important for us to know that. Um, you know, consumer, they are now very careful and very aware uh, of their current financial situation. Uh, the second trend I would like to highlight here is that the uh, health and wellness. So when we ask the, uh, the consumer regarding their, you know, factors that impact on their choices of uh, go now eating in, you know, the restaurants and besides the, the taste, the quality of food, the quality of ingredients uh, come up as the top choices for the consumers. Um, meaning that, you know, more, more and more customers, they, they think about their health, their uh, lifestyle, their choice of ingredients. And this is, this is very important uh, because it's going to reflect the futures uh, as well, right? And more and more, I think, we have the presentation of, um, you know, pizza for B, and then we, we know that for sure more and more consumers they cautious in terms of the sustainability practices in this industry as well. So, do you have uh, any uh, input, uh, Um I mean, I completely agree with you on the health and wellness. So, we actually did white paper together in 2022 after COVID. And we also state that health uh, becoming like a priority element for consumers. And health for Vietnamese consumer doesn't just mean maintaining your, your weight or, you know, trying to getting thin or getting fit, but it's also about mental health. And I think that trend kind of also stay until 2024. When we do the consultation for our clients, uh, we have our data team in-house and we also find that uh, consumers are willing to spend more on healthier choice and also they are paying more attention to uh, nutrition ingredients. So I completely agree with you on health and one is becoming like a priority. And I also think another trend would be people are being more careful in the way that they're spending. But we still see that they, they experience is something very important to them. Uh, it's still driving their dining preference. I think it's because the rise of social media, the TikTok, the Instagram, it really lead to the sick of the quest for uh, self-expression and exploration so we're seeing a lot of like unique dining concept appear on your for you page if you do like you know scoring tiktok and i think it's it's become very prominent among vietnamese consumers um, nowadays yeah so spending less but on better food 
um, is, is one of the trends, right? I read somewhere that uh, this year alone, I think 30,000 restaurants were closed, right, in the first half of the year. So the other ones hopefully are doing better because uh, that is just math, right? But let's see how that goes. Um, interestingly for us, we did last month, we started serving a vegetarian buffet for lunch at our all day dining, the, the Park View. Um, and it always struggled after breakfast, it's just empty. And all of a sudden we're getting people to come in so that we actually from tomorrow are implementing a full vegan and vegetarian menu there. You know, we can feel that, those trends. But let's talk about Gen Z. So Gen Z is becoming the predominant driving force in restaurant consumption, right? So in your opinion, what drives their preferences and how can businesses effectively attract them? Okay, I will first then. Um, I think we talk a lot about Gen Z, right? It's kind of become like a buzzword. Um, I think for Gen Z, what's the most different would be, for Gen Z, food is not just a daily fuel for them anymore. I think it's a part of their personality. I think dining out is the way for them to kind of get themselves exposed to different cultures. Dining out and taking photos and posting on social media is the way for them to tell others that who they are, uh, what kind of tribes that they um, um, that they belong to. It's really become a part of their individuality, a part of their personality. I think secondly is that Gen Z approach to food is become much fluid comparing to most of us sitting here because they get exposed to global cuisine uh, in a much younger age and also again social media making them more adventurous uh, when you know trying their food or expose themselves to fusion dishes uh, or you know ethnic food. At Vero we were about to launch a white paper on Gen Z and kind of correcting all the myths that people have about Gen Z about you know we are um, it's just generations of all sort of buzzword but anyway we did it in through a lot of like different areas but the most common pattern that coming through is Gen Z their decision making is really driven by tribes and when I'm saying tribes, it's not the traditional community that we've seen. It's not just, you know, uh, your favorite music, but it's really uh, experience driven. It's really passion driven. And food becomes their tribe membership. It's the way that, you know, they're telling that they belong to a certain group. Uh, it's the way that they construct their social identity. So I think that's the most different about Gen Z. You feel the same, Jigao? <laughs> A little bit curious, how many Zen Zs here in this room? Can you please raise your hand? Identify yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a lot, right? Okay, I guess the rest is, um, yeah, millennials are, are Zen. Um, They're all dining. <laughs> sure, uh, I think, I think uh, what Huyen mentioned, and I would like to top up with the other uh, two trends and two factors that I think Zen Z, they are prioritized when they, you know, eat it now or make the decision of it when they eat it now. We used to associate Gen Z with FOMO, right? FOMO, fear of missing out. You guys must heard that word a lot, meaning that, um, as Huan just mentioned, right, they like to go out, they like to explore new trends with their friends. However, uh, our new data just a few months ago showed that Gen Z, more and more, they're very cautious in terms of spending their money for our home activities and also including food and drinks. And uh, when we ask Gen Z uh, regarding what kind of factors that uh, they prioritize when they make the decision to choose the restaurant to go out and eating, so affordable is the top priority for them when they choose the restaurant uh, when they go out. So meaning that, okay, so Gen Z is more, taking more and more time conscious in terms of, again, spending their money. The second insight that we uh, found out in our study is that the emotional factors. So as millennial or Zen X, we go out, we have a good time uh, with our loved one, meaning friends and family. You know, when we have a meal with them, we feel relaxed, we feel comfortable. But with Zen Z, I think our data show that uh, they are more individualistic, meaning they prioritize their own experience by pampering themselves with good food and desire atmosphere. So this is a very important thing uh, for F&B brands. Uh, I think after you decide a, a concept for your restaurant or the offering for your restaurant for different target group, right? Uh, think about what kind of offer for 
different uh, generation. Maybe one, one of the key highlight uh, when thinking about your strategy, uh, offering towards different generations. You touched a little bit on the difference between Gen Z and millennials. Do you, do you have anything to add? Like how many millennials are in the house? That's a few more hands. Hold on, no Gen Z, a few millennials. Are we that old? Gen X? All right, okay. Some people don't want to disclose their age. Fair <laughs> enough. But do you see any other key differences between millennials? Because millennials are also still a, a, a huge uh, consumer group, right? I think um, Gen Z is all about, you know, I agree, individualism. Um, and again, it's about their personality, the way that they express themselves. And again, what's the most um, different would be because they get exposure to, at least for Vietnam, they get exposed to uh, global cuisine from a much younger age. So I remember the first time I tried pasta would be, you know, when I was like 10. But my brother, who's Gen Z, probably have it like, you know, when he's five. So they get exposure to, to global cuisine much younger. They being more, much more adventurous when it comes to uh, trying out new cuisine or you know trying fusion dishes. That's why they're seeking out for more like limited exclusive experience. So I think that would be the most you know distinctive trait between Gen Z and uh, millennials when it comes to like F and B. Let's talk a little bit about sustainability and uh, you know we had a wonderful presentation from Four Ps. So why not use them as an example, right? So. Um, obviously, they're doing wonderful things. What do you, you know, beyond sustainability and, and traceability of product, um, what other key factors do you think contribute to the success of, of a restaurant? Who wants to take this one? Let's talk a little bit about uh, Pizza Poppy as, as the case study here, right? So, uh, definitely sustainability. So, I remember I, uh, yeah, in 2014 and 10 years ago, I just, uh, finished my study in France and then came back to Vietnam and everybody keeps talking about pizza for bee and I have no idea what is it. I tried pizza for bee the first time in the in the restaurant in the small alley in, in Le Tanton, right? And since then I'm a fan. And I think beside um, sustainability that later we're gonna have a touch on that, uh, I think good value for money is uh, one of the key things, right? Uh, so good value for money, it's not about price, it's not about discount, it's not about promotion, it's about your offering. Um, your quality of food, right? And most of the case, when we talk about the quality, we talk about the consistency as well. And with Pizza for B, I think all the time they deliver the consistency, no matter what experience is it, no matter if it's uh, delivery or dine, which is great. Last but not least, um, the innovation, as we, we see the presentation before, right? They innovate, keep innovate. And this help them open a wider range of audience, which is very important uh, now today. And for me, there's, uh, there isn't a one size uh, fit all, right? So, but I think these are definitely, how to say, the good ingredients to make a very good recipe in this f and industry. Um, yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I think sustainability is definitely one of the key factors that make Pizza for People so successful. Besides having good food, excellent service, um, excellent quality. And I think what makes Pizza for Me really successful, as Chikao say, is consistency. Uh, I think with the brand promise of, you know, bringing the world my four piece, um, I think it delivers. It's with sustainability at the brand pillars. I think it's not just a, you know, a buzzword that you use to kind of communicate to the target audience, but it's, it's infused in the operation, infused in the way that you uh, source your ingredient locally, um, and it's also infused to the way that the service is delivered to the customer, so meaning excellent service again. When I come to Forby, the, the staff was very friendly, they go extra smile for you, and then the food is, is good, so it's really delivered the brand promise, um, you know, like all around it and it's very consistent. So I think that what makes uh, Forbes is such a successful case. I think we're all fans. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> I, Now talking about Forbes, I'm suddenly very hungry right now. <laughs> so, um, we also have an Italian chef who makes excellent pizza, by the way. <laughs> but back to sustainability, just, just very briefly. Do you think it really makes it difference in the decision-making process of, of guests these days? Or is it a nice add-on? It's not just a nice touch, but I, what I want to say, if you claim to be sustainable, 
be sustainable. Don't use this as like a buzzword of, oh, we have, you know, sustainable restaurant, but, you know, there's no reason to believe. Consumer, of course, I think good food is like the foundation. Of course, you, your food has to be high quality. Uh, the service has to be good. Uh, but on top of that, I think consumer, we talk about trends, people, um, the customer, they care about sustainability. And I think if you claim to be sustainability, uh, be sustainable. Um, I think uh, consumers are getting more skeptical. They demand more from authentic city. So um, they they will care. If you talk about sustainability, they will care about where's your ingredients coming from, what would be, you know, like whether it's like it's locally sourced or, you know, whether you uh, find a way to uh, employ local talent. So, you know, all that I think is also adding up to the success of Airbnb uh, rents. Excellent. All right. So, Ms. Hwan, as a consumer, as consumer behavior evolves, what are the key challenges and opportunities in F&B communications? I mean, we touched on social media earlier. Gen Z is certainly growing up with it from very early age, and that's maybe why they try to be more separate. You know, that's your background, really. If you can. Uh, shed some light on that? I think there's two points, and I think they are both challenge and opportunities at the same time. Uh, first of all is the algorithm. So uh, I think the way that we consume content is very dictated by algorithm now. And uh, there's no longer traditional linear uh, consumer journey, but our engagement is, is heavily di uh, dictated by the algorithm. And I think it's a challenge for brand because um, it's getting more difficult to cut through the noise and you know get yourself exposed to the right audience. But I think at the same time, it's an opportunity uh, because if you really understand the nature of the platform and really understand what resonates with your target audience, then you have the opportunity to create hyper-targeted, hyper-personalized uh, content that uh, reach to the right audience at the right moment. And because algorithm is about uh, relevance, right? Um, it's you know it's push a content where it's relevant to the cultural trend. This is when that uh, when bis, uh, F and B business can reach to the audience when they're most open to discovery. And I think the second is the experience economy. So we talk about uh, experience driving the dining uh, preference. So I think again it's a challenge because it's no longer just the food. Um, you cannot having good food and you know like finger cross and you know your restaurant will be getting more popular. It's a lot of thing around it. It's experience, it's service, it's storytelling, uh, and it's a lot of thing. Um, so it's a challenge. It's difficult, but again. Uh, it's an opportunity because you can really differentiate yourself if you do it right. You know, having a storytelling that resonates with your consumer, uh, you know, re really connect with the with them on a emotional level uh, would be like a very great opportunity for friends as well. Definitely, definitely. Talking about the consumer change in habit right now, I think in Vietnamese we have a sentence, ăn trong nồi ngồi trong hướng, uh, right? So uh, for all foreigners here, that uh, means it's about uh, the table ethic, right? The manner. So when you sit at the table with the others, you need to be mindful where you sit, what uh, position, right? And in order to act accordingly. And I think it's, it's very true in this current time. There's so many disruptive factors that impact on the way uh, people behave, people make decisions, stuff like that. So we know for sure that presentations say that promotion, discount, is not sufficient enough to keep the sustainable relationship with your uh, uh, client, with your customer, right? And uh, now today we live in the world that consumer, customer, they have so many choices. They can access to a wide range of food. Uh, they can make a lot of decisions as well. Um, so that it, so branding uh, has to be right. And this is the first step that you need to get it right. However, as uh, Hyan mentioned, right, once the customer turn into your restaurant and they try the food, uh, this is we call it first time trial, right? You cannot expect to gain the loyalty that of that customer yet, right? So it have to be uh, you have to keep the quality, keep no innovating, keep your services quality right in order to have let's say second choices, a uh, second trial third trial, fourth trial, and then from that moment on, then you can truly earn the, the uh, loyalty of your uh, customer. Loyalty, interesting topic. I'm going to digress a little bit from the script. but um, So it was interesting for me to learn that actually 4Ps has introduced a loyalty program, uh, even though very different, very unique. 
which is nice. I used to tell my team, if you have the right product and the right quality at the right price, why do you need the loyalty program? And I always used 4P as at the example, because they didn't have one maybe back then, and they were full everywhere, right? So just get it right. Um, but how do you see loyalty programs these days? Are they still useful? Would be interested to hear your opinion. Definitely, yes. I think for us, when we, we work with a lot of uh, clients, and I think loyalties are... Uh, uh, is a very important factor that keep the, uh, the customer come back to you, right? But loyalty doesn't mean that you have to have an app or you have to have a, a kind of like, you know, program setting up or something. Loyalty here can be very uh, simple, right? You take care of them, right? You know that this is the birthday, just remind, give them a little bit of, you know, uh, discount or code, uh, invite them to come to your restaurant for further, you know, dining experience or something like that. So. Again, uh, when we talk about loyalty, I think it doesn't mean that you have to have a lot of things set up uh, if you are a small and medium, um, let's say, restaurant. Oh, yeah, very agreeable. Um, I think loyalty, at the end of the day, meaning that you're showing that you care for your customer, is mean that, okay, whenever they come back, they got the same um, standard of, of quality, they, they, they feel that they got cared. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, a program. It doesn't have to be like a, a very, you know, highly invested app. Um, I think what's important is that they feel like whenever they come back, they got welcome. The, the staff remember you um, and, you know, uh, you got the, the, st the same standard of, of service. So I think it's important, but I think um, in a much wider sense than, you know, uh, app or you know, vouchers or anything like that. Thank you. I, I agree. <laughs> we still have a loyalty program, though. So maybe some final takeaways. Um, if you can give uh, some advice for any uh, restaurateurs or, or new ventures that are coming up, what would be sort of your, your maybe top two tips on what to get right to be successful? Because realistically, I mean, globally, I think uh, most restaurants fail or 60% of restaurants fail, I think, in the first year and 80% within five years, right? So it's actually a tough business to be in. You know, in a hotel, we're always lucky because the rest of the operation can carry the restaurants, but if you're freestanding, you don't have that luxury. So how do you make sure? Right, so our economy, right, and also our customer, we are facing, uh, we have been facing uh, so many difficulties since uh, uh, COVID, since uh, economic downturns and a lot of things happening. And I think we, at this, stage, I think some of the new behaviors, uh, new trends, is kind of settled and it's create a new habit for, for your customer. I have three things that I would like you to take away after this uh, panel discussion uh, from my end, right? So first of all, I think understanding. You need to understanding your customer, your target group, understand your offerings, and then you build the uh, needs around your uh, audience because this is what make them come to you, right? And then second thing is about differentiate. So differentiate yourself amongst other offering in the market. And last but not least is technology. So um, I'm a big believer in technology and I so many ways, so many platforms out there that can help you to reach your target audience. A few months ago regarding uh, social media and uh, live commerce, and I think the, the, these are the tools that can help you reach even the wider group of target audience uh, uh, for, your, for your business? Um, I have two things. I think from communication standpoint, um, I think we need to understand that segmentations is now triplet. Um, so when you um, think about the target audience you want for your f and it's not just, you know, demographically, it's not just, you know, whether it's high-end um, restaurant or, you know, a more mass um, a restaurant, but you need to really understand your target audience, what passion, what experience that drive them, that tie them together. Um, so understanding that, you know, the segmentation now is, is tri-black. Uh, especially for young uh, consumer. Um, so because of that, um, experience need to be hyper-targeted. Uh, it needs to be unique. 
And secondly is that uh, you need to be prioritized influencers over traditional media. Uh, so, you know, engage with uh, content creators, engage with uh, macro uh, influencers. And uh, it's not about the number. It's about, you know, whether they value a lie with your business, uh, whether their content is authentic. Um, so I think it's very important. Um, and at Vero, we develop like the whole index to make sure that it's not just about the number. It's about uh, the value alignment and it's about the authenticity. City. Secondly is platforms playing an increasingly important role. The experience now is not just online or offline. It has to be a blend between physical and digital space. Uh, your story, so make sure that your message is consistent, but also make sure that each of the channels you have complement each other. Telling the story as a whole is also very important from, you know, whatever the uh, consumers read it online, it really transfer to the experience that they have offline as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm just reading down there, it says over time. <laughs> so I guess time is up. All right, thank you very much. Awesome.